lodge ye, for you know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, thus coming suddenly, he finds you sleeping. Dear God, thank you for giving us the language of music. Give us peace and remind us we are not alone. We pray for peace in our homes, in our community, and in our world. Help us to be peacemakers, singing a song of peace to the Lord. Amen. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, and to hear his holy word and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed in thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults, Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Our King and Savior draweth nigh. O come, let us adore him. Let us join together in the Benite. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills are his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands have prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is the Lord our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. For he cometh to judge the earth and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. Psalm appointed for today is Psalm 85. Please join us in unison. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the inequity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out! And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. He that is mighty hath magnified me. generation to generation. He has shown strength 
with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's join in the second part of the song of creation. O you heavens, bless ye the Lord. O you waters that be above the firmament, bless ye the Lord. O all you powers of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye sun and moon, bless ye the Lord. O ye stars of heaven, bless ye the Lord. O ye showers and dew, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye winds of God, bless ye the Lord. O ye fire and heat, bless ye the Lord. O ye winter and summer, bless you the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye dews and frost, bless ye the Lord. O ye frost and cold, bless ye the Lord. O ye ice and snow, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. O ye nights and days, bless ye the Lord. O ye light and darkness, bless ye the Lord. O ye lightnings and cloud, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. Today on this second Sunday of Advent, if you're keeping up with our parish-wide Advent program, this is a Sunday where we talk about and focus on the concept of peace be peacemakers and bringer of peace to the world around us. Now, you've heard the Magnificat or the Song of Mary. You've heard it twice. You heard it sung by Ashley. You heard it read uh, by, the, by Don Norton. And as I've read through and looked at the Magnificat all week, I've kept trying to see where does peace come from this? Where do we find peace in this song of praise? I think we'd have to realize that it is a song. It is a song of praise. Mary probably sang this. And in singing it, there's a depth of emotion that comes up from it. I think when we use music, when we sing things, we, we are able to put our, our feelings into it more sometimes than we do just the spoken word. We sing from the heart. You heard Ashley do such a beautiful job on this song of Mary. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God. Words that come not from a book, but from the heart. If you watched last week's, last week's worship, you saw, you, you saw Benjamin singing the song of Zechariah. And it was such a wonderful, moving chanting of this ancient song, these ancient words of scripture put to metric song. And you could see the old Zechariah doing this, and you could feel the emotion growing and coming from that. Maybe I'm so enthralled by people who have this talent because I was one of the few acolytes in the cathedral election who was told not to sing on Sunday morning because it made the boy choir sound bad. So I sat up there with my mouth shut and just kind of hummed along sometimes. But if you notice that when people are happy, when they are at peace with the world, you will find them singing, maybe to themselves, but nevertheless singing. At my house, where last week my wife has been decorating for Christmas, and that means the whole house is decorated, and, and, and she's a little frustrated right now because we have two bedrooms that we can't get into because we're waiting for new carpeting and some stuff. But she decorates every room in the house. And if you stop and listen while she's at the other end of the house, you'll see hear her singing. She may be singing Christmas carols, 
but she's singing because she says there's this place of peace and, and, and contentment in doing what she loves to do. And she just spontaneously sings about that. So Mary is offering a song of praise this morning. But she's also singing of a vision. She is singing about what God is going to do. It's about God scattering the proud of bringing down those whose egos make them tower over others. She's talking about God bringing down the mighty, and that's lessening the oppression of the weak. He lifts up the lowly. He fills the hungry with good things, and he sends the rich away empty. And so we see this radical leveling of the world or creation by God. And it's one of those, I think, that's going to bring a, a sense of peace into some people's lives. I think if you are one of the lowly, if you are one of the poor, there's a sense of peace that might come if you knew God was going to lift you up in some way to try to find peace. And as I thought about this, I thought about all the people today who are out of work because of the pandemic. Uh, who don't know how they're going to pay their bills or how they're going to continue to live where they are. And they need this sense of peace in their lives. We don't know, we worry about people who, who have to be on the front lines of, of, of fighting this epidemic. And they don't know, you know, if or when they will contract the disease and how they will respond to it. And yet they are out there every day because they can't do anything else. This is what God has called them to do. But they are looking for that sense of peace in that time when this will all be over with. So we struggle these days to find that peace that Mary is talking about, that peace that led her to break into song over, over, over being pregnant with Jesus. And I think we have to discover that that in our faith in Christ, we, we can find that sense of peace that exists there. We put our faith in Jesus, and Jesus says in John 16, uh, in me you may have, you, you will have peace. In the world you will face persecution, but take courage, I have overcome the world. So Jesus is offering us that gift of peace that we find on the inside. So Mary is singing about a new world. Mary is singing about God who can bring a sense of peace into the world. And it's not just that outer peace where we are free from war. It's not that outer peace where we are free from conflict between, between people. But we're talking about that, that, that sense of peace we have within ourselves, where we are at peace with ourselves, where we are at peace with the world where there's peace in our hearts and peace in our souls. Sometimes in, in interviewing clergy who are, who are applying for jobs or, or leaders of other institutions, uh, being the bishop on the, on the board who is interviewing, sometimes uh, I will stop candidates cold when I ask them, how is it with your soul? How are you doing inwardly in your spirit? Are you at peace or is there turmoil? And how is it with your soul, and especially with clergy who, who were supposed to be find some sort of peace in our daily routine of prayers and faith and realize that sometimes that's true and, and sometimes that not, that's not. When I think of the, of the, of the inner peace that we're looking for and that, that, that I think Mary is talking about in the Magnificat, uh, I'm sent back to some great words from the prophet Isaiah. And when Isaiah wrote these words, the, the, the people were sitting on, 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 in Babylon in exile, uh, not knowing what the future would be. And Isaiah brings them a vision of the future. He brings them a vision of peace, if you will, that inner peace where their soul um, will be quieted with them in them. And he writes, I'm about to create new heavens and a new earth. 
The former things shall not be remembered or, or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever of what I'm, I am creating. For I'm about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred years will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall be the days of my people and my chosen shall enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer, and, and they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my mountain, says the Lord. See a vision of peace that God has in mind for us. See a vision of peace that I believe we can have now through our ongoing faith in Christ. See the vision as coming into fruition as Mary sings about what God will do and what God will do in her son, Jesus. This Advent, we are called to be at peace because Jesus is coming. We're called to be at peace because Jesus is here. Let us stand and join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins. We may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
O God, who makest us glad with the weekly remembrance of thy glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord, grant, in this, grant us this day such blessing through our worship of thee, that the days to come may be spent in thy favor, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusted in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. On our prayer list today, I ask your prayers for Yesba, Jana, Gary, Ryan, Steve and Ivy, Kelly, Titus, Bishop Bill and Carol, Andy S., Fred and Mary Ann, Michelle, Mike K, Brad, Rose, John F, Steve, Tate, Hazel, Michelle, Joan S, the Clark family, Anna and Belden, Lavita, Larry, Paul, Lorraine, Dick, Erlene, Bobby, Bill, Donna, B, Joan, Dan, Wanda, Jean, Joan and Bill. We ask for your prayers for those of the armed forces, especially Kevin, Will, Lane, Zach, Sam, Brandon, and Alexis. O Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray thee so to guide and govern us by thy Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget thee, but may remember that we are ever walking in thy sight, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for our full communion partner, the Moravian Church, northern and southern provinces. We pray for the Li people of Liberia and Sierra Leone. And we pray for St. John's Church in Wichita. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before thee for all members of thy holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and godly serve thee through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen. Let us join together in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thy unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.